Daily Bible Time. Good morning. It is Monday morning, 1st of July. Dominic Steele here. And look, I'm just going to spend a couple more minutes today in Isaiah chapter 66. I know I preached on it yesterday. And thanks so much for all the different bits of interaction that I had with people. I thought I was a little light on the section from chapter verse 7 through to verse 11 of chapter 66. And I just wanted to kind of acknowledge that and pick up on a couple of little thoughts. There's a very interesting couple of verses, 7 and 8. Before Zion was in labor, she gave birth. Before she was in pain, she delivered a boy. Who? has heard of such a thing who has seen such things can a land be born in a day a nation be delivered in an instant yet as soon as zion was in labor she gave birth to her two sons now let me give you a couple of lines from alec motier's commentary here um he says um here uh, possibly the single thing that refers to the painless birth of the well, painless birth it's a symbol of eden restored and the curse removed the picture is of motherhood without labor the child is really hers, but at no cost. Uh, delivers is only used, used here of the delivery of a child. Uh, in verse 8, he says, No such thing has entered human experience, either by hearsay or experience. It's without human analogy, an act of God. The single thing, well, that could be the painless birth of the foregoing statements, the things, although it's things, who has heard of such thing? Uh, that refers to kind of, a twofold act and the twofold act of producing a country and a nation. Um, this would be vivid. Did you ever hear of that? Well, what about these? Not only a child, but a land and a nation. The stress with a day and a moment is the same. I mean, this is what happens. Can a land be born in a day, a nation be delivered in an instant? Yet as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her sons. When the Lord brings glory to his people, it'll be as sudden as the judgment on his enemies and as complete. The questions appointed a pointed mockery of the skeptics of verse 5. It's as if to say, do they mock the expectation of the coming glory of the Lord and find it unbelievable? They've not yet faced the central miracle of the whole enterprise, the instantaneous springing into being of a whole new society by supernatural birth. But the actuality is Zion and her sons, they're her children, but then their birth is by the unique humanly unheard of process of verse 7 a work of god now interestingly then you jump down to verse 10 and uh Motia says of verses 10 and 11 that these verses are the pivot of this little section um I'll just read them to you. Be glad for Jerusalem and rejoice over her, all who love her. Rejoice greatly with her, all who mourn over her, so that you may nurse and be satisfied from her comforting breast and drink deeply and delight yourselves from her glorious breasts. Now, what's going on there? Well, this is what Matthias says. These verses are the pivot of the whole section. They link the future, verse 11. You may nurse, be satisfied from her comforting breast, drink deeply, delight yourselves with the present, verse 10. Uh, be glad for Jerusalem, rejoice over her. And he says, in the present, the call is to identify with Jerusalem, to rejoice in her joy, to love her what she is, and to mourn over her sorrows. In a word, Matthias says, as members of Zion here and now, we, you and I, members of God's church, are to be fully involved in, committed to the whole life of the earthly church. Zion is still looking forward to blessings in store, to rejoice with Jerusalem, to share this forward luck. To love her is to prize what she stands for, the city where the Lord dwells in holiness, to, to, to stand, to prize, to value heaven and all it stands for, to live in the benefit of divine mercy, to enjoy the richness of divine fellowship and to fashion our lives in obedience to the divine word. To mourn over her is to lament the sins and, and failings of the visible church its shortcomings, its weaknesses, its ineffectuality in the face of the world and the presence within it of compromises and apostates. But to do so, to mourn over it as a fellow sinner, longing for the blessings and perfection yet to come. And very helpful. What am I doing? What am I to do right now? I'm to be glad for the church that I'm part of, to be glad for the wider church, to rejoice over her, to rejoice and pray for all who love her, to rejoice greatly with her, and yet mourn over our imperfections. I think I long for that to be better. I long for our sin to be eradicated. I long for us to be more like Christ. And I especially long for this in the light of the future. Heavenly Father, thank you for our church, Village Church. Thank you for, well, the fact that so many people in our church are working to be like Jesus. 
and we pray that you'd help us to address our imperfections, our sins, to repent of them and to trust and walk in obedience with you. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen.